Uh, hello, my name is Yask Shwastav, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to deploy your Django web application on the web. Uh, in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to use Heroku. Uh, Heroku, let's uh, begin the process. Uh, for the first time users, go to heroku.com and uh, sign up. Fill in the form, sign up, create your account, and you'll get your username and password and save it because you're going to need it for the future references when you'll be deploying your web application. Uh, so once you go there, you probably see nothing over here. It shows me the list of the applications that have been deployed by this account. I'm going to delete this one because it is... So what Heroku does for us is it provides us a server computer where we can upload our Django application and uh, we can serve a website from that particular computer all the time. That server runs 24-7 and uh, you know serves for your web request all the time. So currently these are all the application. Uh, Polyglot is one of the application I deployed recently so let's run this. So once you deploy application you'll get a subdomain name. Uh, so, and along with the web server, you'll also get a database. Heroku has a limitation in the free account, I think, is that you can only use PostgreSQL as your database. Whereas Django comes pre-configured to use SQLite database. So all your Django application that you were probably running were working with SQLite. But we need to reconfigure our own Django application to use PostgreSQL database to in order to deploy this application on Heroku. So let's uh, so as you can see, all my uh, web application that have been deployed, they are already using uh, PostgreSQL. So let's begin. I'm going to be referring to a web page. Uh, this is an article which is on Heroku's website. So just I'm going to just go to this website, right, and refer to the instructions that are present over here. I'm going to follow these instructions only. So my application that was deployed on Heroku has just opened. It opened. It took some time because uh, Dino was sleeping. Uh, you'll learn about Dino later on in this tutorial. So next time this uh, website will load up pretty fast because there was an activity, so it took some time to load it for the first time. Other than that, it will. Uh, in all the future cases, it will run just fine. Okay, now let's just get started. Uh, first of all, I'm going to create a new directory. Uh, my documents I'm going to create a new directory test I'm going to go inside this directory uh, where we will create a new Django application and we will deploy it on the web okay so let's get started before we can do anything we need to set up a virtual environment here so uh, type this command virtual env space here bnv what this does this one does it it creates a virtual environment for all the pip dependencies for me now uh, the difference is that because normally i have installed a lot of uh, dependencies on this computer globally so if i run this command it will show me all the dependencies that have been installed in my computer but i don't want to use all of them uh, my Django application do not need all of these things so I don't need to install all of these things in my uh, in my server so I will only want to use a couple of them which are required by my Django application so I'll only install those dependencies so I'll set up a virtual environment to you know to you know it will isolate uh, isolate it will create a virtual environment which will be isolated from the things that are already installed in your local computer so once you run this one, type source uh, bnb slash bin slash activate to activate the virtual environment. So next time if I run pip freeze, take a note. 
that it only shows me the dependencies that are installed inside of this directory not outside of this, not outside of this computer so if i go back a directory and i do pip freeze i can see all the dependencies sorry uh, If you go into another, if I just, you know, if I don't activate my virtual environment in the, another session, if I run pip freeze, it will show me all the dependencies that I installed globally. But once I activate this virtual environment, I'll only see the one that are uh, installed in this particular directory. So uh, next run this command pip install Django tool belt. By, uh, by the way, before you begin, before you, you know, run this command, Make sure you install PostgreSQL on your computer. So on Mac OS X, it's easy to install. So brew, I think this is the command uh, which you can follow. Brew installed PostgreSQL. Run this command and you'll have PostgreSQL installed. On uh, Ubuntu, I think you need to run sudo apt get install PostgreSQL. Just a second. So just run this command uh, sudo apt-get update and install PostgreSQL and you'll have it installed. So now let's quickly uh, run this command. This is a script which is uh, going to install a couple of dependencies. Pip install all the dependencies. Uh, it will install Django first of all which is obvious. It will install Gunicon which is a WSGI server for Heroku. This is actually responsible for serving your website. Then it will install DJ database URL, which is another dependency that configures your uh, Django application to use PostgreSQL database. And DJ static is uh, another dependency used to serve the static file in the Django application. So once you have done that, I'm going to create a new Django application, freshly newly created Django application, which will have nothing. So uh, I'm running short on time, so I should probably do it very quickly. So as you can see, uh, I have uh, the Django application has just been installed in this directory. Manage.py is right over here. I can run manage.py file. Right. So it's running fine. Next thing is I need to create a proc file. Proc file will contain uh, the command to run my Django application. So proc file contains the instruction web conicon going on is a command it could be going to run on the server computer this is the name of your application dot wsgi right so make sure you write it you create your proc file so i'm going to create a proc file file make sure you give it the same name sorry type the command and make sure hello django instead of this all you have to do is changes to your own application name in this case it is hello django but if in, in your case if it is any different you change it right now just to test it uh, foreman i can run foreman start to see if uh, foreman is serving my website on my local computer or not foreman got installed with heroku only so you can see that foreman is working and that's all i wanted to do now let's uh, go on and i uh, think next thing is to configure on our own Django application to use PostgreSQL as a database. So as you can see, if I uh, open this application, if I go to settings page, I can see that the database configuration is listed over here. So it comes pre-configured. I haven't added this. It uh, came pre-configured to use these settings as a SQLite tree. I don't want to use this setting. I want to use uh, PostgreSQL instead of this. So it's very easy to configure our application to use PostgreSQL. Uh, all you have to do is uh, just copy these two commands okay so currently just a second i'm just going to copy to those two lines of quotes what it's going to do is importing dj is uh, there, uh, the, the application from heroku and it will automatically you know give details of the database and replace the previous value in default with the new value that we will get from this function which is which we get from this uh, Heroku. So Heroku will automatically configure our application to use the PostgreSQL server that we want to use. All right. So actually you can copy other things as well, which is I think for security purpose, one of which is for 
security and I know is actually already present but I'm going to just write it anyway other settings are just for the serving the static file so you can just blindly copy and paste it it will automatically configure your Django application to use a PostgreSQL instead of running SQLite copy all of these instructions on your wsgif.py file which is probably going to be empty and just the pre-configured thing they don't write anything here next thing as I told you before uh, the way we deploy our application on Heroku web server is by pushing the changes from a local git repository to the Heroku remote repository so let's create a git repository in this particular so to create a git repository I'm going to type git in it I'm going to add all of the changes that have been done in this particular directory this is going to take some time and I'm going to commit all those changes this is the commit message and uh, so yeah I think we are done right so our local git repository is completely configured to use to be deployed on the Heroku web servers so uh, now all we need to do is run the command Heroku create I think let me just uh, go back and see how many applications have already installed okay I can create another application right here so I'm going to run this this is the important command this is the only command that you need to run after creating your uh, git local repository Heroku create name of your application in this case uh, I'm just going to type yask test you can give the name of the website make sure you give appropriate name because this uh, becomes a part of your subdomain name I'm running short on time so Heroku create this thing oh sorry So it gave, it, created, it gave me a stack. Stack is a Cedar 14. Cedar is a particular group of stacks uh, that Heroku has for Django application. It has different stack for different applications. Suppose uh, it's a, if it's a Ruby on Rails, and there's a different app, uh, there's a different stack for Django application. We have Cedar stack. So if I clicked on this application, it also gave me a URL name, which actually I haven't done anything there. So it will only display uh, just the welcome page of the Heroku. I haven't deployed my application as yet. I've just created a new stack it just gave me a stack with a URL name and that's all now I need to push the changes in order to you know uh, run my Django application so I'm going to do git uh, push uh, uh, Heroku master so Heroku is the name of uh, my remote repository and master is my current uh, local branch on this local git repository So I'm going to wait for this to happen. So I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to resume it after this process is over. Uh, as you can see the uh, the process failed and the reason was I forgot to run one command. Uh, don't have a requirement.txt file over here. So I need to create that file which should contain all the dependencies that need to be installed on my stack. So now to run that I need to run I can run this command which is a unix command which will redirect the output of pip freeze to this txt file it will create this file and it will output all the content of pip freeze into this requirement.txt file now if I run requirement.txt file it has all the dependencies right here it wasn't there before now it has so I'm going to run that command again and uh, hope that this works right now so I'm going to pause this So, uh, so I uh, committed those changes. I uh, committed those changes and I pushed it again with the requirement.txt file, and the process was successful. And I can run Heroku open. Oh. And this should open the web page with the deployed application. So now you can see the Django has been installed and uh, now it's uh, serving the web pages here now to see the logs uh, I can run Heroku logs oh. so as you can see uh, I just visited my website so that was a get request and at this particular time and this was the request ID and this was the host 
how much time it took, what was the status, how much of the bytes were transferred. So all of these details are listed over there. Now suppose you want to, uh, you know, go to that particular computer where your application is running from. So you can do git, uh, sorry, you can do Heroku run bash. So now after you run this, you see that this dollar symbol uh, represents that you are running a bash terminal and this terminal is actually inside of that particular server computer where your application has been deployed. So now this process was actually equivalent to SSHing into your remote server. So I can uh, run all the Unix commands here. This is actually a Linux computer. Now I can suppose I want to run uh, migrations. So I can do manage migrate. That's it. It uh, created the models of authentication. User model has been created right here. Now if I want to run make migrations. So if you want to exit, go ahead and click on exit. So you are out, out of this. So thank you for watching the video. This is all that you need to do. Uh, go ahead and create your application. First uh, test your application in your local computer after our process is over. Now make a git repository and then run the command Heroku create name of the application and then just push the changes with uh, the command git push. Uh, that's all. These are the three commands that you need to remember. And after that your application will be deployed. Another thing is you need to configure your Django application to work on top of PostgreSQL database instead of SQLite. So these are all the processes. If you follow them, you'll be able to deploy it successfully. If you have any questions or any suggestions, just leave uh, post it in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video.